interesting, something you all be um, expecting, because of recently there has been so much to talk about, about the Nigerian Basketball um, Federation. So joining me is um, Ugo um, Udeze, who is um, a member, a board member of um, the Nigerian Basketball Federation. It's good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Definitely. Um, and we know that um, your profile, um, apart from your profile, everything around you for almost more than um, yeah, for almost more than two decades has been about um, basketball. And of recently, we all know that you've been in the uh, M's of affairs. And when I mean M's of affairs, in the corridors of making basketball or taking Nigerian basketball to the next level. Let, let's start with something pressing. Let's start with something um, we need to really talk about, and that has to do with um, the Nigerian Basketball Federation internal crisis. There's been so much story going on from um, also a member of the Federation that's talking about um, Colonel Sam Amedu, who has been saying that um, the present board of the Nigerian Basketball Federation is not on the right track. And the mission server, um, let me use the word allegations as regards, but I, I'm wondering that um, he's, a, he's also a member of the board, that what's going on within um, these um, members that have done so well for, for themselves. W w give us an insight to what the outsider perceive as an um, internal crisis in the Nigerian um, Basketball Federation. Well, um, I don't know what, um, honestly, I don't understand what the internal crisis is. And um, I heard the gentleman you mentioned, and uh, he's, been, uh, he's been in the Nigerian basketball, he's been in a lot of boards of the Nigerian Basketball Federation for the, before I was born, for the past 30 years. So um, I think he's better, he explains what the internal crisis means to him. Okay. Yes, interesting also, it was on this uh, one of the programs we have on our platform uh, that he said that there has been so much about the present board led by Ahmed um, 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 Kida, that's the president of the Nigerian Basketball Federation, saying that um, he, they, 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 they've really um, taken him away from um, um, committees and he has been the one that brought about the present board after so much fight um, with Tijani board and all that that he, the present board is not going in the right direction. These are his words and I'm quoting them. These are his words because um, the program took place on Plus TV Africa and it's interesting to also have you. You also mentioned um, issues that has to do with um, some of the board members benefiting from um, a, a sponsorship program that is owned by board members. Um, just to hear your own view, if there's any, and if there's not any, just to balance the views, the both um, point of view, if there's any, and if there's not any, or if there's what you perceive as, if everything is going on well with the board. So I think uh, I, I'd like to talk, share a story with you on how I know Colonel Sama Medu. Okay. I think it's very important for your viewers from my perspective, so it's more a personal touch, and so everyone understands what uh, you know. My own personal journey in the matter. I met Colonel Sam Amedu during uh, I played for Nigeria in the under 18 championships uh, in '96. Um, Colonel Sam Amedu at the time was the head of delegation, and we drove three days from Lagos to. Yaoundé, on a 4x4, four four, on an open bed vehicle, rain and shine, to get to Cameroon. When we got to Cameroon, Colonel Sam Amedu promised us that we will, if we win, we we're going to be flown back to Nigeria. Because we went through, and some of the members of the team are still alive today. Okay. So they can testify to what I'm saying. We beat everybody there because we were, in part, because we were scared to, <laughs> to go back by road. Okay. Through one of the most perilous journeys I've ever been in my life, uh, till today. And uh, after we won, um, on a summer, maybe we put us back in a 4x4 vehicle hmm. and drove all the way back to Lagos for two days with our gold medal. Okay. and dropped us off at the National Stadium 
without any communication till today. Hmm. Um, I heard later that the ministry had released some money for that particular event and nobody knew what happened to it. The second experience I had with him was when we went to the World Championship representing Africa and Greece the next year of that tournament. When we arrived in Greece, we didn't have any uniforms or shoes or any kind of basketball gear. And I remember at the time, Tony Shinoiki, he used to own the Lagos Islanders, contacted Nike, and they sent us some products. They sent us each player about five pairs of shoes, socks, T-shirts. And when we got to us in Greece, we were given only one pair of shoes, one pair of socks. I remember the captain of our team at that time, Mustafa Abdul Salam, may so rest in peace. Okay. Um, protested. Protested him when he started wearing Adidas socks for the games. That was when they released the socks and shoes to us. Okay. When we got back to Lagos, those shoes were found in the market in uh, Yaba being sold. Hmm. Um, I'm not making, this is my own personal experience. Hmm. So, um, I just want to give an insight to the story okay. of uh, the kind of people that we are talking about and the things that have happened. And I can tell you that people that are in basketball will share different stories to you of the experience, okay. you know, people that have been in the, uh, in different federations for more than 20 to 30 years, up till now. And each time they're in every federation, they have issues with whoever is the president. So and uh, you were talking about, you were talking about sponsorships. Yeah. I don't know, I've, I watched the show and I understand what people, what was said about Alpha Sports, and collaborations with sponsorships. Let me make this very clear. Okay. Um, if you, first of all, if you look around Africa, all the shoe companies have pulled out of Africa, from Nike to Peak to Puma. I'm not sure there's any African country right now that has an official sponsorship of a uniform. And people don't understand the value you get from being a shoe sponsor is because of the viewership you get on TV. Okay. Before, before the under-18 championship and before the women's, Nigerian women's team went to, uh, went to yeah. the Olympics, as the, as the chairman of the NBBF sponsorship committee, oh. I reached out to Nike. And I have evidence of all this interaction. I reached out to Nike on behalf of the national teams. I have the text message from them till today that says that they are not interested in Nigeria. Oh. That the last time the, Nigeria brought, which is the last MBBF administration brought in peak, they felt discarded. There was no communication to them. And they saw Nigeria discarded their agreement with Nike without any communication. So they're 100% not interested in dealing with Nigeria. Oh, okay. We reached out to Adidas, which there's communication on that too. We even offered them to sponsor the women's team to the Olympics. Adidas declined. Um, the only people that had an interest was Puma, but they were not interested in sponsoring the Afro basket women. They were only interested in the Olympics. Okay. But we told them, you can't just go straight to the Olympics. There's a process to this. I understand the opportunity for the Olympics, but you have but they were not interested in the Afro basket women championship they had in Rwanda. So in, in all these cases. After sports was left to fill the gap, even oh. for the women's team in uh, in uh, in Paris. After so much effort has been made to secure a partnership, none came around. We are forced to find a solution. Oh. It's not people. It's, it's not especially in this economic environment. It's not even in the best business practice for us to spend that kind of amount of money 
to begin to manufacture product for the women's team. But at that point, there was a void. There was nothing else to do. Okay. Even the under-18 championship that happened in, uh, in South Africa, these are two teams. We're talking about a delegation of almost 50 people. 12 okay. players, 24, uh, 24 players, boys and girls. Um, 24 players, boys and girls, with officials, mandatory officials, referees, coaches. You have to keep all of them. That was a very expensive initiative that we undertook for the service of our country. Okay. Nothing else. That game was not broadcast on TV. Okay. So you, did you watch it? Hmm. It was not any business opportunity for us. We spent a lot of money because of service to the fatherland to hmm. show that we are trying to do everything we can. And then people have to understand, we started Alpha Sports from scratch. I'm the Alpha Sports started from scratch. I'm the co-founder. I'm the one that came up with the ideas for Alpha Sports. From everything, it was painstakingly created just because of these opportunities. And it wasn't done just to, because we understand that for the grassroots and for a country to grow, there has to be some kind of apparel, that apparel sponsor that's symbiotic to the country. Okay. So we worked really hard to get to this point from scratch. We built this business from scratch. We, we've employed a lot of people. So, it, and, and it's so obvious that um, the importance of having you on the program is to, for clarification. So, um, it is based on merit and based on the fact that you've contacted um, um, Pu um, contacted Puma, contacted Adidas, and Nike for um, Alpha Sport to rescue the situation. And that's one of the reasons why we decided to just hear um, your own part of the story. And for those that have watched, um, that um, sport business some days earlier. This is just to clarify the issue that Alpha Sport and Ugo and the um, president of Nigerian Basketball Federation did not impose Alpha Sport on Nigeria. It was after several deli um, deliberate um, consultation with Nike and all left um, without an intention of um, sponsoring us, that's the Nigerian basketball, um, the Tiger and the Tigers. That's why um, um, Alpha Sport um, came out for the rescue. But if this is the case, why is um, Colonel um, Amedu retired seems to be not in the same page with the rest of the board? So after I watched your show, I actually reached out to Colonel Sam Amedu. I called him several times, but he did not pick up my call because I wanted him to. I wanted to be transparent to him and tell him, "Look at this is what's happening." I'm not sure if Colonel Sam Amedu has been in any meetings or um, for a very long time. He's still someone I respect. He was part of him. Uh, my opportunity to be who I am today was also part of the endeavors he took down the road. So it's someone I truly respect and admire in so many ways. You know, but like I said, people are gonna have their own intention. I don't know what his acrimony or personal intentions with people on the board or the president of the Nigerian Basketball Federation. And we in the Federation have always said that if there's any issues, it should not be affecting our Federation. If you guys have any because they not uh, some are made to um, our president, Musaki, have known each other for over 40 years. They were, the, they were friends before all these things started. So everybody's saying, if there's any issue, you guys should make it, especially Skona Sam Amedu, if you have an issue with the president, go and settle it with him personally. Find a way to support the federation. Find a way to support the country. You know, everything, I even saw what he wrote the other day about if some players were banned, if some players did not play, Nigeria would have done better. I mean, criticizing such an historic effort by the Nigerian Basketball Federation and the Nigerian team. You know, who is the sports makes those assumptions that if you have a different player, things might be different. He doesn't even know the process. Even when the head coach of the team was hired, Rina Wakama, he was, the most, he was so critical of her. He was the one that made sure that that tried to belittle her that she did not play on the national team, that she's not good. Look at this same lady is not the head coach of the year in FIBA. Hmm. 
you know, when when we started the Continental Basketball League, I don't know if you heard about it. This yeah. is still one of the best basketball leagues that they ever had in Nigeria. Yeah. The person that tried to scuttle it called me on the phone and told me to put a stop on the league was Colonel Sam Amedu. And, then, and back then I told him, sir, with all due respect, I'm not stopping the league. Because he was working with some international federations that were opposed to an independent basketball federation in Nigeria. Oh. So I don't understand. I still don't understand why to today, because he's not in charge, because he's not the person that is controlling the, the narrative, that everything is wrong. Everything can be wrong. Everything can be he's wrong. He's been a member of every federation. Sorry? Everything can't be wrong because, you know, from, from Nigerians, with what has happened with Wakama, the female basketball, it's so unfortunate that um, people would think we can't have an idea that um, there's someone in there that doesn't want all this to happen. And for Nigerians, yeah, it will really sadden them that um, the, one of the best female basketball coach in the world was actually not supposed to be because um, Sama, um, Colonel Samuel Amedu retired, doesn't want her. So this is a big revelation and it's not going to go right because Nigeria... Have no, seen... what I'm saying to you is on record. It, he wrote it down. I'm not making assumptions. Everybody in basketball knew he was opposed to her. Well, I don't think he was just opposed to her. I think he was opposed to everything the president of the Basketball Federation did. He didn't know anything about her. But he was so critical of that situation. But I'm glad the MBB has stood fast and stood by the, the woman. And today she's receiving awards and taking the country to greater heights. So, so it's so, very unfortunate that we stop. Yeah. So what what, does, what do you think, Samir Amedu, who has a very um, high profile about basketball in the continent and also in West Africa? What do you think he wants? If I may ask. I think that's a question for him. I think for me, he's an elder statement. He's been a part of basketball from the beginning. If there's something he wants, he can sit down and talk. Every time you hear something, you hear um, even the crisis that happened with the women's team. You know, all those were orchestrated behind the back. Mm. You know, he, every time you hear, um, instead of coming out and saying what he wants to say, um, you see articles that say um, um, uh, unknown source. Hmm. I don't understand. I don't understand what the situation is, and and and, 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 and really, it befuddles me because if you look at it and all the things that happened at the Olympics, the Nigerian Basketball Federation was a shining star. Yeah, sure. Look, if you think about it, hmm. even before that, the Nigerian Basketball Federation has been a shining star. Hmm. But the, the only complaint people have is the local. League, yeah, sure. What's happening in local league? And, I, and, and I've been the one that says this there is no country in the world the federation runs a basketball league, hmm. no country in the United States, in Europe, this all private enterprise. Okay, and I've told people we've done the CBL, we've done the ABL on our own part. It's an opportunity to invest, it is an opportunity for people to lock in and create a, their own NBA, create their own CBL. Instead of working on the government or the Nigerian Basketball Federation, which has no basis or equipment to even run a basketball league. Hmm. So what why instead of people why don't people capitalize on the opportunity? If it's really a viable, it's a real economic opportunity. Okay. And Nigeria is right for it. Nigeria is they'll be definitely sitting there definitely. if somebody goes and does it now, everybody will be complaining that these people are taking over the enterprise of uh, enterprise of Nigerian basketball. Uh, Ugo, with what you just said, it's obvious that um, for every person watching us that you definitely have the interest of um, um, the promotion of basketball in the country from the very fact that we all know that um, no government runs the basketball and there's, there's a need, a critical need for private investors to really take the challenges. But still on him, on um, Samuel Khamed Amedu, he, he said uh, that he has been deliberately omitted um, from every decision-making policies of the Nigerian Basketball Federation. And what we are just waiting for is um, the next election that will probably take place in 2025 or 2026. Um, actually, is the fact that he has been 
push aside if I'm going to use that same word for policy making. But so far so good. It's obvious that um, the decisions that the Nigerian Basketball Federation are taking on behalf of the country is in the light, is in a good light. Talking about the women basketball, and you also admitted that the only thing lacking is because of the local um, league and all that, and no federation or no government to want this best in position to run the league. But what do you think is the reason why, if I'm to believe um, what Sam Ahmed said, why he has been taken away from decision making in the Nigerian Board of um, Basketball Federation? First of all, when, we, when I ran the CBL and the ABL, I was not a member of the Nigerian Basketball Federation. Hmm. You don't have to be a member of the Nigerian Basketball Federation to impact basketball. You don't have to be president of FIBA Zone 3 to impact basketball. Hmm. You know, you, you, you've been in basketball for so long, there are so much you can add value to. I don't have to be a member of the Nigerian Basketball Federation. I'm a member of the Nigerian Basketball Federation because I represent the Southeast Zone. Hmm. And not because because the Southeast Zone is underdeveloped, marginalized, and I found a way, and I thought it would be an opportunity for me to bring that back up. But I don't have to be a member. I'm not interested... You can come take my position on the Nigerian Basketball Federation. The title does not give you... I've never received a dime from the Nigerian Basketball Federation. In fact, I've never traveled for free or extra code in the Nigerian Basketball Federation. The first time I traveled for the Nigerian Basketball Federation was to South Africa mm -hmm. for the under-18 and Abidjan, which I paid my own way and which I found a way to raise sponsorship for the whole team. So I've never asked, so when people say they don't make decisions, okay, if you're not making decisions, impact in so many ways. If you love the game so much, why don't you be impactful? Why don't you put these young people that you've met up for so long, start a, a basketball league. You can be the president of that basketball league. Okay, uh, so we also, here I am, we're also working to start another bas professional basketball league in, in Nigeria. And these young people that are crying, there's no league, the same people that scuttled the first league that we tried to do. So it's what 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 is the what is the opportunity for them? I don't know. Hmm. I can't answer that question for him. But and I don't think anybody has to be a, the president of Nigeria. If you love basketball so much, come take the position. Even the, being the MBB president is a terrible job. The system is is I think for me it's a terrible position. <laughs> if you really want to be impactful, you don't have to be a member of the board. Ugo, something applies, something applies um, to, to what everybody says in the country, that you don't have to hold a political position to make an impact in the country. You don't have to be, be the chairman of an association. You don't have to be um, anything political. And that's the same line you've, you've, you, you are, you're actually going to. But now let's talk about the league you, you want to bring about. You mentioned um, impact, how impactful you need to be even without being having a political or an appointment on the board. And you also said just right now that um, you are planning to have a professional league. Can you, can you give us an, an um, open Nigerian to that, what you just said? So for me, I think the Nigerian ecosystem is ripe for an equity-driven basketball league. I still believe that a basketball player can play basketball in Nigeria take care of his family, own a house in Lakey or in our Sokoro if it's done properly. I yeah. still believe, I'm not just a basketball player, the journalists, the referees, the, we can build a whole ecosystem around the ball. It needs, you know, it needs, the first time we tried to do it, I was sitting in Nigeria and I didn't understand some aspects and there are some things that I could have done better. But right now, I still, that is the legacy we want to leave behind. And everybody keeps saying MBBF run the league. The MBBF is set up by people that are voted in committees. It's not done by its professionals. So I don't think it's equipped to... The, the people that are board members don't even get... You need people that you... You need to set up an office. You need to get people throughout the year to run a professional basketball game. And I think Nigeria is right for it. I understand that Nigeria is going through an economic crisis, but this is actually the right time to set something like that up. 
So when people complain, why don't they do it themselves? It's viable. It's there. The facilities are there. We now have the more arena in Abuja. We now have some more facilities in Lagos. We have in Enugu. We have in Benin. We have in Portacot. We can. So there's a lot of things that are now getting better. Where I think that a professional basketball league is viable, and it's not just from a basketball standpoint. It's from a sports economic driven point of view, hmm. where you are adding actual value. Where you actual adding actual value to the economic development of Nigeria. And these things are just there. It's plain and simple for someone to take over. I'm not talking about some of these basketball camps that's done here and there. I'm talking about an equity-driven basketball league where people have joy, want to come and watch games, mm. where they have their superstars. Mm. And I think the opportunity is still there for someone to take over if they want. Mm. And I think that's what's been the prerogative of the NBBL, to, mm. to, to create an enabling environment for somebody to do that. I know it's going to take a lot of hard work, and a lot of people are shying from hard work, but that's actually what it's going to take. Mm. And I implore people like Konosan and Medu to focus on finding ways to do that instead of criticizing or finding, you know, he has the cachet, he has the human capital to say, hey, Ugo, come, you guys come, let's do this. Why don't we try and do that? Mm. The basketball coach at that history making moment was also in Nigeria and um, the Nigerian Basketball Federation needs to be given an applaud that when history was made, it was almost like a Nigerian affair to the West um, of the world. Let me ask this, I cannot but bring a small bit of um, Sama Amadou's um, case here a bit as we go to the next topic. I want to ask, is it only Sama, um, um, Sama Amadou, Cornell, retired, that seems to be the only one having something like a um, a different opinion, let me use that word, as Nigeria, as Nigerian basketball is going forward. Is, is, is it, does it seem to be the only one? To be honest with you, I think deep down he's happy that Nigeria is doing well. Because I know Colonel, that I, uh, we call him Colonel, that I respect so much, is a lover of basketball and a lover of good things that happens. You know, again, like I said, he's someone I respect entirely. You know, I know his family. I know him very well. I've known him. He's part of my process to where I am today. You know, but I know maybe because of some personal issues and some of the things he's having with people on the board, I think he has to say what he has to say because he doesn't want to be, he feels like he's not part of the decision process for whatever reason for the first time in a long time in his basketball career. But I know deep down he's happy for the team. I know deep down he's supportive of what's going on. So, but I can't speak for him. Okay. But knowing that he loves basketball, I know, you know, nobody's perfect. You know, I'm sure there are things the Federation can do differently. I'm sure there are things the president can do differently. There's no leader that's perfect from top to bottom. Mm. You know, all you can do is support. It's not that I agree with everything that happens in Nigerian Basketball Federation. I don't. But I have a president, and I have to support him as much as I can in all his endeavors. And that's what we're supposed to do. Mm. We have to respect him. We have to, you know, everybody can decide for everybody. Only one president. That's why he was appointed. So we have to, at this point, do everything to support him and grow the game of basketball. Ugo, I, I, I'm, I'm obvious that you've given so much respect. And just for um, Cornell, um, Samar Medu retired. I think um, every other person, also me, I've met him before. And um, I know that he has done so well for basketball. I see Axe. Is, is there any other person apart from him that seems not to um, follow in the line of what, um, at least for his reasons, in the line of what the present president Musa Kida is doing. Is there another board member apart from him that seems to be not um, happy with what's going on? Again, I can't speak for every board member. I'm, 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 okay. I'm not, I'll, I'll, I'll be, he, ha, he can't, yeah. it, it, will be, it, will be, it will be reckless to think that everybody is, when you have a group of people, <laughs> even in your own family. Yeah. Um, it's not everybody in your family has, that's happy about some decisions that's been made about things. Oh, okay. You know, but the point of the matter is, even when you disagree, you're family. You're yeah. a group. You find a way to solve your problems with each other. And you then day to day, till today, I've never had any intervention. Or Connor has never come to me and said, "Hey, Ugo, this is I don't like this. This is what it is." Nobody has ever come to me. I'm on the board, 
So some of the things I hear, I hear from outside. Some of the, nobody has come to say, Ugo, what's your process with Alpha Sports? How did you guys, you know, we have a committees. We have a sponsorship committee. We have all these committees. I say, ask me questions. If you have any, and so you know, every time all these things are happen, there's conflict of interest declarations. Where, where, for example, if it comes to a point, everybody else handles the situation. So, if you have a personal issue with anything or come he has my number pick up the phone and say Ugo, i don't like this what's going on give me the opportunity to explain to you that has never happened okay so if colonel has met to you um or met any other member of the board to say his grievances probably they wouldn't have been leaking out in the media or um, they wouldn't have been in gratin and interview to the rest of us because you know the media is ready to take every information out there but um if you had come ahead to say this probably wouldn't have heard what is going on at least with um, the nigerian basketball federation again i think some of these issues are very personal and has nothing to do with basketball oh okay oh, okay so yes let's have to go to the last topic of um for today we've been talking with um ugo who is um a multi um, a multi-talented man when it comes to basketball and sport. Talk about Alpha Sport, talk about being a member of the Nigerian Board Federation. And not only that, um, our own brand, Nigerian brand, owned by Ugo, is also in Congo, and not just Congo, in Cameroon. And Alpha stands for Africa for Africa. That brand was part of the history-making team of the Tigers when they became the first team ever to qualify for the quarterfinal from Africa. So, but notwithstanding this interesting moment, and I'm um, rich Nigeria, we're so happy about that moment. That does not stop away the fact that there are challenges for Nigerian Basketball Federation. So, what are the challenges facing the Nigerian Basketball Federation? The challenge is facing the Nigerian Basketball for the Federation is challenge that's facing all of us in Nigeria. Definitely. I don't think it's uh, limited to Federation. And the way I think the system of sports is put together, which I'm not... I do, again, I don't think the Federation is structured enough and the way it's positioned to run the commercial enterprise of basketball in Nigeria mm. or even all the other sports. I think they, they should be able to create an enabling environment for for private enterprise to stick out. If you look at other developed countries, whether it's the United Kingdom or Europe or United States, sports is private. From the NBA to the NFL to all the basketball, all the leagues everywhere, even cycling, golf, everything. It cannot be all based on government. And I think people do not understand this is an opportunity. And I think for us, you know, that's an opportunity. So, you know, I think instead of people are understanding that the government cannot spoon feed you all the time. You don't need the government to run a league for you. You don't need the government to do anything for you. All you got to do is have the business mindset and the opportunity to create these things and make it happen. There are people that are hungry for basketball. So why don't you go and raise the capital and start a basketball league? So the three on three league, what do, whatever you need to do, this is a great opportunity for a, in a country of two hundred million people. We, we so I think the system for me is the system for me and what the, the expectation and the entitlement is what's flawed. Okay, um, um, be, be, beyond that, um, what, what do you think for the next um, the grassroots um, basketball? How, how do we take it from the way it is to the next term? Um, to the next level. That's the main job. Infrastructure, 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 infrastructure. You know, we have to create more infrastructure and place, and you know, we have to create environments, enable environments for this to happen. Like if you come to the US, you have YMCAs in every neighborhood. You know, you have, you have to get kids. And this, for me, grassroots is not even just about basketball. That's me. I don't think basketball. Grassroots is about have, finding a, a situation for our kids to interact. Finding a situation. There's nothing like team sports. When you put your kids in team sports early in life, they learn to work with people. They learn to understand that this person is better than me in this particular field, and this is his position. He's a left winger. I'm good at the right wing. I'm a good defensive player. All these things translates in real life when you're in the office. This person is good in math. This person is good in English. 
you know, we have to start putting this, this molds the future. This molds our young kids. In sports is just a, a template for real life, you know, where kids don't have to make real life mistakes. So they can understand competition and understand growth. So for me, grassroots is about creating an enabling environment for our kids to succeed. More than anything, sports is just the icing on the cake. And what you get from sports is just the icing on the cake. Yes, and thank you very much, um, Ugo, for being part of today's program. Thank you very much for your time. We we'll definitely um, hope soon as for obvious reasons we'll be having you talk to you about um, the next phase of, um, of basketball in Africa. Thank you very much, Hugo. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. We'll Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. We'll thank speaking, you. Yeah, we're we'll speaking yeah. with um, Ugo Udweze, who is um, a member, a board member of um, the Nigerian um, Basketball Federation and is also in charge of um, the youth. Um, section, if I use that word, of um, Nigerian Basketball um, Federation. And a big thank you for those that have been part of today's program. I want to say a big thank you for being part of this program. And also forget you can join us on all our social media platform to get the best um, in the world of sport. The conversation doesn't end after the show. It actually continues on our X page and also on our Facebook, Instagram, and not forgetting um, Facebook also. Yes, um, I will leave you just to go. Uh, the NBA preseason where we have um, 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 Los Angeles Lakers and also Timberwolves, Minnesota, who played um, just some days ago. You'll be having the privilege to see the father and son playing in that um, preseason. Enjoy this and goodbye for now. <laughs>